from the heart of Wrexham. Welcome to the Hope Street Church Podcast. For more information of how to get involved, stay tuned until the end of the episode. I've titled my talk this morning, of Miracles Have Left the Building. Turn the person next to them say, Miracles Have Left the Building. You're like, what? Going to have to unpack that one. So just to give you a little bit about myself, um, I trained as a mechanic, an engineer, so I question everything. I like to know how things work. Um, but one of my life mottos is keep it simple, stupid. Okay, so a lot of what you're going to hear today might not be anything new, but I pray that it be revealed to you in a fresh way. Is that okay? So we're going to start with uh, one of those um, kind of standout mess, um, scriptures in the Bible, which is John 3.16. And if you don't know it, hopefully it's up on the screen. And it reads this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And the bit I've really focused in, in on this morning is, For God so loved the world. You are amazing. You as an individual are amazing. And God loves you for you being you. You know, in the Bible, there are between four and five hundred verses where God simply talks about loving us. Depends which version you look at, but between four and five hundred verses devoted to God, pouring out his heart of his love for us. You are unique. Please turn to someone next to you and say, you are unique. You are a one-off. Turn to another person and say, you are a one-off. And you are a masterpiece. Turn to another person and say, you are a masterpiece. So Ephesians 2.10 says, for you, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. There will never be another you. There's a funny side to that, I'm just super aware, but uh, some, some are like, oh, so glad for that. Um, but actually, there is a serious side to that, right? That God can't help but look at us and go, wow. Now, you might not feel that this morning, but I feel in my heart of hearts, in my spirit, that there were people here this morning that needed to hear that. You don't realize how special you are, how loved you are, how unique you are, and that God looks at you every morning and goes, yes. You are a miracle. A guy called St. Augustine, um, considered one of the fathers of our faith, uh, said this, a quote from him, Men go abroad to wander at the heights of mountains, at the huge waves of the sea, at the long courses of the rivers, at the vast compass of the ocean, and the circular motions of the stars, and yet they pass by themselves without wandering. We can often, can't we, go about our day and just be so do, 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 that we forget to be, be, be. You are here because what God wants you here. God knows you intimately. Matthew 10, 29, 31 reads, What is the price of two sparrows? Anyone know? Apparently one copper coin. 
but not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without the Father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. And so don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. That scripture right there, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, we, the very hairs on our head are numbered. My automatic question is that, well, how many hairs is that? For some of us, it's a few less than when we, <laughs> when we started life. But on average, there are 100,000 hairs on your head, on the human head. 100,000. I know, right? Um, and God has numbered them. When you were in your mother's womb, God was like, one, two, three, for each and every one of us. That's how intimately God knows us. And yet something even more than that blew my mind this week. This week. You, know this, you know the thing called DNA? Do you know DNA? It's the thing that makes us who we are. Well, scientists discovered that in 1869, and it is the exact and unique description of you. Yeah? Not a good thing if you're breaking the law, but it is an exact and unique description of us. Your DNA is who God ordained you to be. You know, if you took your DNA and you took it out of its cell and you put it end to end, it would be six feet long. One cell. And there are three billion characters. Does anyone know how many a billion are? It's hard to kind of get here. This will help you. So one million seconds ago, yeah, 11 days ago. Okay, so that's a million. We can all kind of like grasp a million. A billion seconds ago, any guesses? 31 years ago. So a million is 11 days. A billion is 31 years. That's a, that's a lot more, right? And there are three billion characters of you in your DNA. You know, if I read your DNA, one character for every second, it would take me 96 years to read you. Ninety-six years is the description of you. It would take to read the description of you. And all in that, that is in one cell, okay? And there are 75 trillion cells that make up you. Are you kind of getting some of this? Like, this is like... And so, a trillion seconds ago, any guesses? Sorry? Thir uh, no, that was a billion. Trillion? Any guesses? 31,000 BC. And there are 75 trillion cells that make up you. And each one of them has DNA in it. It has three billion characters. And, you know, I, I, I learned some of this stuff and I was like, man, I'm... Like, when I've said to God, you don't really know me. <laughs> you know, when I'm praying, I'm like, God, you just wouldn't understand. <laughs> it's like, no, Lord, you really do understand. And you know, when I said that, that 75 trillion, three million cells in your body died. And at the same time, three million new cells were created to replace them. And just again, three million cells more died, and three million more cells were created. Your body has three million cells dying and being created every three seconds. 
and we wonder why we're tired all the time. <laughs> Your body is doing amazing things even as you sit there. Who knew that we could take 2 Corinthians 5.17 literally when it reads, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. Because we are literally <laughs> being created anew every three seconds. You know, every cell in your body uh, regenerates every seven years. There's a new version of you. But you look the same. You are the same. But you're refreshed. And as I was preparing for today, as I said, like all these kind of things were coming together. And it was just this, God, you love us. How can we ever doubt that when you so intimately know every fiber of our being, every bit of our DNA? Before God created the earth, he knew who you were going to be. Everyone sat here is not an accident. You are here for a purpose. And God loves you for it. You know, David in Psalm 139 said, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And I'd just like to pause here. I really felt God wanted us to have a pause here in the middle. Because I think there are people here and you don't know it full well. Maybe some of what I've said even in this last eight minutes has been like, what? There's a God up in heaven that loves me, that sees me as his miracle, that is, wants to be intimately involved in my life. I'm not an accident. So I wonder if we could all just bow our heads. I'd like to pray for two lots of people. I want to pray for one, maybe you're here and you've never known full well the reality that God loves you and wants relationship with you. Then two, another group of people, you've maybe been a Christian for a long while and you've got so caught up in the doing that you've, you've forgotten the being and how intimately God loves you. So just so I can, if you're one of those two people, just so I can see who I'm going to pray for, would you just mind just popping your hand up for me? If one of those two people, groups. Thank you. Thank you. Let me pray. Holy Spirit, would you come now, I pray. Rest upon each and every one of us. Reveal Jesus to us in a fresh new way. Lord, I pray a sense of worth. A sense of love that you have for each and every one of us. And I pray that each of us would know you more intimately. We would allow you into our lives in greater measure. That we would come to understand truly how much you love us. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to just reach under your seats, you'll find a little slip of paper that is this kind of 
size. And it's something that uh, I discovered when I was a teenager. Um, I was a youth pastor for 25 years um, at another church in Peterborough. And um, it's just something that has been valuable to me uh, through the years. Um, it's simply a collection of verses from the Bible that uh, have been collated together, as, as it says, as a father's love letter to us. And uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes, uh, particularly on days like today when it's cold, wet and dreary outside, uh, and you need a bit of a pick-me-up, you feel a little bit down or, you know, you're like, oh, what is life at the moment? These, I have had this, you know, in my Bible, uh, on a fridge and all sorts of places, and it's just a really helpful tool for me just to read that to myself every so often and to remind myself how much worth I have to God. So that's for you to take away. Do take it. Um, maybe, again, just put it on your fridge, put it somewhere where it's visible. Um, and, uh, yeah, let it breathe life into you on a day when you need it. So I've got part two of my message. So we are miracles. Everyone say, we are miracles. But we, what, we are called to be miracles, I believe, to someone, so other people as well. This sense that we're blessed to be a blessing. When we understand that we're a miracle, that God loves us, we are cherished, we are affirmed in that. That can give us a strong foundation. But it, as much as the, you know, the gratitude is there for that, uh, you know, it's that thing of, well, I want that for someone else as well. I want someone else to feel that sense of God's love on their life. And we know, don't we, that through our day, through our week, we come into contact with people and we know in our heart of hearts that if they had what we had, they might look at life differently. And yet, inside of us, there's this like, fear or, or I don't know what it is but we just don't do we <laughs> it's not the first thing that is on our lips and I have to be intentional about doing some of that stuff if we're honest like sometimes we don't get out of bed and praise Jesus and sing Kumbaya and speak in tongues for five hours and then go about our day. Sometimes we just get on with it, right? And, and God might not be the first thought in our mind. And so every morning, uh, as I said to you, I, my motto is keep it simple, stupid. And uh, Paul, when he spoke on worship a few weeks back, um, said the verse, and it's Isaiah 6, 8, and it reads... Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. That's something that I pray every morning because it's simple. <laughs> but also, I think something happens when I say that. I'm saying to God each morning, Here, whatever I am, Use it, please. <laughs> Let me in some small way be sent by you today that I would be open to the things of your spirit. I'd be open to your voice and that I would go and make a difference like you've called us to. And so we're called to be miracles to someone else. And I think sometimes as Christians we have bigged up what that looks like into this thing that really scares us and means we don't act. We, read it, we can read in the Bible, can't we, of so many people that God has used in amazing ways to perform signs and wonders 
miracles and healings. And I totally want to re-emphasize what Sharon spoke about a couple of weeks ago, that we are called to do those things too. We are called to call in the miraculous into our world. John 4, 12, 14 reads, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will not do the same works I have done. This is Jesus speaking. And even greater works. Because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And so we are called to do even greater things than Jesus. And I will guarantee there's a whole load of us sitting here right now going, oh, really? I'm, looking, I'm reading the Bible and reading what Jesus has done and being like, no way. You want me to walk across the room and to speak healing over someone? That is just so far from where I'm at. And yet I think it's something that we can learn. It's something we can build on. I think there are so many other instances in the Bible where God uses a really small thing and does a big thing. There are people in the Bible that have just been obedient and gone, I'm going to do a little thing. And maybe in the presence of Jesus, an amazing thing happened. One of those instances is in John 6, 1 to 13. And again, Sharon touched on this when she spoke, and it's the feeding of the 5,000. If you don't know the story, I'm not going to turn to it because it's quite a long passage, but if you don't know the story, basically, um, people have gathered to, speak, to hear Jesus speak. Uh, and long story short, everyone's hungry. And the disciples are freaking out being like, how are we going to feed everyone? Like, what's, how, how do we do this? Like, and someone pipes up, oh, we could go and buy everyone bread. And they're like, yeah, but it'll take a year's wages to buy everyone bread. How we, we haven't got any money. Um, and then in the midst of this, like, this lad walks up and goes, I've got my lunch. <laughs> and when I read this, this story, the, 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 the questioner of me, the, the, the how does that work bit of me, Try to put myself in the shoes of the young lad. Did he start his day knowing that that was going to happen? Probably not. But is it conceivably possible that he might have started his day with God, here I am, send me. He probably got up in the morning, you know, did his hair, put his gel in his hair thought, what shall I do today? I know I'll go and hear this Jesus guy. Probably stopped by Tesco's on his way to get his lunch because he knew he'd be hungry. And he's gathering with all these 5,000 people waiting to hear Jesus. And there's so many people that it takes a bit of organizing and it's like maybe like midday and the sun is beating down. And then he hears the murmurs of people going, oh, I'm so hungry. Like, I didn't bring no food. Like, what are we going to do? And this inner voice rose up inside of this young lad. It was like, take your lunch. Take your lunch forward. And everything in his natural was like, no, don't, don't be silly. What are five loaves and two small fish going to do? And yet, he was obedient. And he felt like God, this was a moment where God wanted to do something amazing for the thousands of people around him. And so he took his lunch forward. And the passage reads that everyone was fed and there was leftovers. What would that have spoken to in the, you know, this small thing? This lad was like he wasn't stepping across the room, speaking healing over people. He was just being obedient with the small. And going, okay, send me. Here, have my lunch. 
I can't even conceive how five loaves and two small fish will feed 5,000 people. But I believe that that's what Jesus is asking for, and so I'm going to do it. And so Jesus put his supernatural on the lad's natural and performed a miracle for 5,000 people. And so, guys, I really believe that we can usher in a sense of miracles in our daily lives for other people. Can you imagine if everybody left here today and we all went over to McDonald's or Nero's and we bought a coffee or a burger and we gave them out as we felt God asking us to give them out? to the homeless, to the guy sat on the street corner. Can you imagine the impact that that would have? If we did it even one Sunday, but maybe if we did it a couple, Wrexham would start talking. Why are people giving out free burgers? Why are people like interested in us so much that they go out of their way to do something for individuals? I'm trying to do this in my life, people. As I said, I'm trying to be obedient and say, Lord, here I am, send me. And sometimes I don't succeed. Sometimes I bottle it. But the times that I do, I believe that God reaches into a person's life through me and blesses them and sows a seed in their heart that's like, oh, why did he do that? And sometimes it's as simple as leaving a pound in a trolley. And I don't want to be little miracles. But we've all been that person that's walking across the car park and gone, oh, I've got a pound for the trolley. And someone might, I, I'm, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, I'm trying not to be like this through my day. Yeah. I'm trying to be like this through my day, being obedient. And so I look for the people as they're come, going towards me as I'm coming out. Like, oh, they might need my trolley. Here, have mine. Just the other, a few, a few months ago, we left here and we um, had stuff to do in Wrexham. We live 45 minutes away, so coming to Wrexham is a, is a good thing once a week. Um, and uh, we went to, over to Greg's, as you do, to grab a hot sausage roll for lunch. I wasn't really hungry, but I thought I'd grab one, so I didn't have to eat later. And um, there was, uh, as I did it, I was conscious there was this guy hanging around outside. And you know when, and this was part of me like looking up and being like, mm. and I just wondered why he was there. He wasn't looking to go in, he was just hanging around. But, it, but I felt like God had clocked him on my heart. And I went and bought the sausage roll. And as I came back out, he approached me. And he said, can I have, have you got any money for something to eat? And I was like, mate, I can do better than that. I've just bought a hot sausage roll. Here, have this one. The look on his face was like, what? I was only after, like, maybe you've given me 20p, but you've given me your sausage roll. And I was, you know... The sausage roll didn't multiply into a Big Mac meal or anything like that. But the look on his face was like, wow, you do that. And I was able to bless him and tell him about this place and say that he could come get a free cup of coffee if he wanted to wash it down afterwards. Guys, let's look for the small things in our daily lives, where God wants to reach into someone else's life and do a miracle in theirs. As uh, Andy and Rach have said, and I'm very conscious of time, um, but these uh, slips of paper here, the invites to the guest services, could we start seeing these as individual miracles? Because we all remember that time when we were maybe speaking to a good friend or we came to a service and we realized that God was calling us. And our lives have never looked the same since because we came to a point where we understood that God loved us no matter what. And so I want to encourage you, if, if, you're, if any of the things that I've said are like, hmm, I don't know if I could do that. Do this. Take these and see if these could be miracles in people's lives. See if they could come on a Sunday 
to one of these services and discover that there's a God that loves them, that Jesus died for them, that they could have eternal life. Is that okay? Do you receive the challenge? Do you think we could do this? Because I've, I've told young people over a period of 25 years that it took 12 disciples to transform the face of this planet. And there are maybe 112 of us in this room. What impact could we have if we take some of this stuff and take it out there? You with me? Come on, let's do it. Thank you for listening to the Hope Street Podcast. We're a church in Wrexham with a vision to be a people of hope, following Jesus and giving ourselves a way to see Wrexham in you. To find out more, head to our website, hopestreet.church, or follow us on social media.